See this beautiful keyboard here? This is a um, D50 Roland I bought four years ago. It's getting a little bit old and I always wanted one of these and I've had it for four years now. But it's getting a little bit old and rusty and it needs a little bit of love. Um, I always wanted one of these keyboards because it was really expensive when I was a kid and it was the first keyboard to transition between digital and analog PCM sounds with some kind of analog treatment of the sounds. And um, there are various problems with it. I've been trying to take care of this old contact, contact spray here. Um, but it doesn't seem to work, so I have to look it up. Let's go here. It's a little bit rusty in the contact. I'm gonna have to look at that. And there's a button here that seems to be not responding. just fine. So that's something we're not going to look at, but there are some rusty contacts and I'm going to see what I can do with it in order to shine it up good as new. So yeah, let's do that. Well, there you have it. I'm ready to service this uh, beautiful synthesizer from the 80s. Uh, it is really heavy, so uh, you may want to take care and make sure you have plenty of space if you want to serve something like this. Probably weighs around 10, 10 to 20 kilos or something. It's really heavy. And the first thing I want to get rid of if I'm going to turn it around and unscrew it is that I want to get rid of this joystick here first because it's protruding. And if I'm turning this one around, I'm going to destroy that thing. So I'm going to unscrew that one right away and just put it a little bit aside so this top screw doesn't protrude here in any way. Make sure it's, on, it's in a safe spot somewhere. And there's the spender here. I can't just pull that one out, so I'm just going to put it somewhere here a little bit on the outside. But you'll be able to see what I've been doing anyway. I'll be adjusting the camera. Okay, let's start unscrewing this beauty. Oh, it's really heavy. Oh, this thing is, oh, it weighs so much. You will not believe it. I managed to actually smash my beautiful floor, wooden hard floor um, downstairs because of the weight of this thing. Um, just gonna make sure the bender doesn't crash into the, into this. Gonna adjust the camera a little bit so you can get a little bit more of the action. All right, that should be enough. You don't need to see more than necessary. So I'm gonna be watching this. All right. Let's unscrew the screws. I have a little technique for uh, for remembering where the screws are. And the technique is very simple, really. I'm just putting them somewhere where near all the all the screw holes so I can remember simply where all the all the screws used to be. I know this is missing a few, but that is to be expected with one of these old things. Uh, the guy who owned this before me, he told me this was only studio used. So but I can almost tell that. There's almost no scratches on it. I had to fix a couple of buttons, probably because they were pressed a little bit too much. But that's the only problem I had when I got it the first time. But the, what we're going to fix today is, um, is those keys that are dead. Uh, I'm not going to do more than necessary because I actually have gone through this one once before and then I fixed two dead keys. Uh, I thought I went through everything on this thing, uh, but obviously I didn't because there's still some dead keys. 
and some buttons. There are some screws behind here. I'm going to have to take care of with a smaller screwdriver. Um, that's easy. Like this. And um, I thought I actually managed to get all the buttons. But as you heard from my previous recording when I played the music, there was a uh, button missing somewhere. So I didn't manage to get it all. I think that's all the screws. So uh, let's take this one up. There's nothing to be worried about when servicing an old solid thing like this because they were made to be serviceable back in the days. They knew what they were doing. And as you can see, it's absolutely freaking gorgeous inside. Beautiful. Just like they made them back in those days. They're, today, if you repair one of these, you'll find a small power supply and a little bit of components in one end. And it will be empty here, and basically just a keyboard here along. But okay, um, we're going to have to go into this unit somehow. So uh, I'm going to have to remove a few units in order to get to this, this one. There used to be a bunch of plastic pieces here. If you have been repairing this one before, you know there is one to hold them back so they don't fall off like I'm pulling them here. But I found out that those plastic bits have absolutely no use whatsoever. So uh, as long as the feathers are really, really good, and they are. So I didn't put those in back. And besides, they were only glued into place anyway, so they didn't do anything good for me or anything like that. It is also really easy to remember where these are supposed to be because they all just fit basically where they fit. So it's kind of easy to put it together again. So it's really not, not a rocket science. It does have a backup battery, which I have recently changed, however. So you may not want to short circuit this when you're working with it. Just take care of that you're not crashing into anything like that because it probably is not a fun thing to have to re restore this to factory condition again. So. Because you basically need one of those memory cards to do that. And they can get corrupt, so be warned before you do that. So take care before you do something like that. Okay, we're just going to unscrew this. Enough talking. Let's get some action. All right. These are grounded with a little bit of shield. So I'm going to have to take care of not short-circuiting those either. Because that could be some give some unwanted results. I bet there are some missing screws here, but those are the ones that I have in the synthesizer for now. And it doesn't really affect it in any way or shape. So that should be okay. Alright. This should be loose. Oh yeah, we have one in the middle here. There's always one. All right, here you go. That should be okay. Right. Always remember to take care of those uh, shielded parts because you don't want to um, get those to short circuit anything. So if I'm not entirely mistaken, I don't have to remove all of these. I can only remove a few of those. It should be okay. Remove this and this. And then I can just move this one over, I think. Should be alright. I have to take care not to short circuit anything. There you go. I think that should be good for now. And I'm not really sure if I need to remove this. I probably do. Yes, I do. I need to remove this one as well. I'll put the screws for this somewhere special so I know it belongs to this unit. And I can see there's a couple of feet on it, which I need to take care of. So I don't mess that up. And I need to balance those later on so they fit again. I'm just going to put this somewhere safe so that I don't fall down into the synthesizer itself. There you go. Good enough. I'll just loosen these contacts here. This one seems a little bit suspicious. I think I'm going to loosen it here instead of losing it here. Because it seems like this could be a future problem if I'm not too careful with this one. 
So we don't want future problems. We're trying to prevent those. So okay, let's take the rest off like this. That should be good enough. All right, now we have access to the entire keyboard. Okay, there's one thing you need to remember before you remove this. There is an aftertouch uh, connected to it. Yeah, this is one of these keyboards that has aftertouch. It doesn't only mean touch, you know, when it feels the velocity of your your fingers and your how fast you press it. That's uh, that's the that's what that what it means about touch sensitive keys. This is aftertouch, just like I did when I was playing the vibrato with my hands, like one 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 one, you know. Uh, there was one sensor bar under here, resistor, I think it is, that you have to remove, and it's right here. It's this little flat cable here. Just remove this one before you remove that, otherwise you can risk ripping that off. So now that you know that, you should be all safe. All right, I need to access these keys. So there's yet more screws to take care of, one on each side, I think, if I'm not entirely mistaken. So I'm going to put this one on each side so I remember exactly where the screws were. Yep, there is more shielding, as you can see under here, just like exactly like that shielding. So you may want to take extra care when you mount this again so you remember the shielding and exactly where it's supposed to be. This is kind of important. All right. Um, have I forgotten something now? Probably, but let's see what I have forgotten. Um, it's stuck somewhere. I'm not 100% sure where it's stuck. But it's definitely stuck somewhere. Could it be that little unit here? It's a long time since I took this apart. It went really well so far. But it has been a while. Alright, I can, I can see them. They are here. But is that really necessary? Do I really need to remove that one as well? I gotta see this. Yep, I think I do actually. So just to be sure, I'll remove that as well. Alright, fair enough. The more screws the merrier, I suppose. Yeah, it comes loose now. That was exactly what to be expected. Bit of happiness, so I can come here. There you go. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there's one more over here. All right, that should be it. Lift it carefully up, and it should come loose just elegantly. Yep, there we go. We have the entire keyboard unit loose. Now I'm going to work on it. I'm going to need the workspace. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove, I'm just going to put this temporarily on my seat and remove all of the electronics while we are working on this uh, keyboard itself. And it should be good like this. So I'm just going to put this somewhere on the floor. I'll be right back. There it is on the floor. All right. So let's work on this like this. All right. Goody. So we're gonna have to remove the keys. Let's see if I can remember where the offending keys were. I've been playing on it so much lately because I love this synthesizer. I have an extra arranger connected to it, and I'm only using the arranger to get extra phonics and extra sounds, uh, so I can actually overlay uh, more sounds on, on each. Okay, we're gonna have to remember, I remember this. It should be this one that's defective because I'm not gonna go through and clean this again. I've done this before. So I think it's completely unnecessary to do that again. So I'm just gonna lift this one up. Uh, I probably have to lift more than just one. So I'm gonna remove a few of them like this. One thing you may want to take care of is that there are there is a different length between each and every one of these. All of these are not the same length, so you need to arrange this accordingly. There will be a short um, spring, sp a short fetter, and a long fetter. You may want to keep that in mind uh, when you are doing this. So I'm going to sort them accordingly. So 
I know exactly where. There is, there is a small difference. It's not easy to see, but I'm, I'm going to show it to you here. You can see here, there's a small difference between them. Hardly possible to see, but I, you can see it if you look at it or like this. You can see the difference right there. Because of the tension of the keyboard, the keys, that's going to be really important to keep in mind. I think roughly I can see the split between those. I'm only going to remove those that are necessarily necessary to remove because the rubber uh, gaskets or whatever that is called that's under the rudder. Oh, shit. I stung myself seriously there. Ow. Ouch. Well, I have to maybe get a new Techner shot for that lately, later. But okay, now I should be able to remove these. So um, I'll put them in order over here so I remember exactly where all of them are. Like this. Okay. Don't have to remove that one. Remove this. And that. Like this. And if I'm not entirely mistaken, that should be a section of its own. Actually, it's bigger than I thought. And there's two sections. Okay. As you can see here, um, these are the rubber connections, connector pads. <laughs> a little nail in there. I need to may have to remove more than I thought. I should be careful because these can really put themselves into my skin. Now that is not very pleasant as I experienced just now. That wasn't fun at all. Ouchie, ouchie. See, they get connected to my skin. So I had they puncture my skin right there. All right. I could probably be a little bit smarter and use one of these. Not sure that was so smart after all. It's just popping out like that. Okay, I'm going to do it manually in the future. Lesson learned again, I suppose. Okay. What I want to do is that I want to expose the whole entire rubber contact sec section. There they are. I don't need to go further than that. This, this is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for to get as far as each section goes. As you can see, I can just pull these, these right off and expose the contacts. I can already see the problem. There's a small dust particle that it has. Um, you can't see this because I don't have zoom on this one. But right here, if you have high definition television or monitor, you could perhaps see that there's a small white particle there. It was probably everything that, that was that was probably the only problem with it at all. That, that's I can easily imagine that. Okay, um, it looks clean because I cleaned this before and it looks beautiful, but I'm gonna have to clean it again. So what I will do is that I will basically just use a little bit of toilet paper and a little bit of contact spray and after the contact spray I will be putting on some uh, uh, very very light graphite in order to give it a renewed contact if you like. This should be working just perfectly if you just hang on I'll be right back with what I need to, to deal with that. Okay I've gotten all the parts that I need. I have gotten the contact spray we're going to be using. And instead of using a shitty uh, toilet paper, we're going to be using a fiber uh, cloth here, which is way better than that because I don't want parts from the toilet paper to be stuck on the contact points here. And I have a, for my art days, I have a Derwent graphics uh, pen. This is a 2B. I would have preferred an 8B, to be honest, because we're going to transfer some of this graphite uh, over to the pads here, which is essentially the same stuff. The, they are the resistant pads here. But first I'm going to uh, clean it a little bit just to make sure that all the contact power points are cleaned. But instead of just spraying this directly, I'm going to be spraying this one instead. So we get it nice and neatly, evenly everywhere on the pads. I'm starting with these resistive points here and cleaning those as properly as I can. Uh, don't use too much force because if you do, you can risk cleaning away the only resistive stuff that is left on the, on the contact points. 
So that's nothing you would want to do. You would want to try to just clean them off lightly. It should be fine. I did that on all the other ones when I had contact problems later. And then I do, do exactly the same thing here. It's a, it contains alcohol, so it it um, drains, it dries really fast. So I'm just gonna clean them up properly. I'm using a little bit more force here, of course. So that should be okay. Oh yeah, they were quite dirty, as you can see. So yeah, a little bit of dirt happens over time. I'm gonna clean away the alcohol now, though, because I don't want it to dissolve the surface. So that should be okay. They look absolutely beautiful. I cannot really see any serious wear and tear here. Under normal circumstances, I would give them a little bit of this. Uh, I will do that. I'll draw a little bit of sur extra surface on it. You can actually see when I'm drawing it. It should be a little bit shinier. Uh, like this. This can take a while. I remember I did this with the entire keyboard, but I've done this so many times with so many keyboards. People say that this is only going to destroy the surface, uh, but I beg to differ because I've done so many times. I've done this so many times to so many synthesizers, and it works like a charm. And I can play with them for years after that. So this method does work. You have to be quite meticulous about it. You can't just randomly put it on. You have to cover the entire pads just to make sure. And since this is basically going to be just a bunch of particles uh, on top of it, you're going to have to smoothen it after you're done with it. And you'll do that with a fiber cloth later on. Just make sure you don't really dry it off because that's kind of counterintuitive to this purpose. What you really want to do is that you want to get the pad to be um, con conduct electricity again. That's basically what you want to do. And if you do this right, it will work for years. So no worries about that. Okay. Just making sure that all the pads gets covered so I don't miss anyone. All right. I think that ought to do it. All right. So I'll take a dry part of this one now, and I'll carefully rub it into it. I do not want to rub it off. I just want to make sure that it gets in there and that there will not be any loose graphite particles that will come in the way and make it sound horrible because you know there will be some contact points that will go on and off and on and off. So I'm going to rub it into it. As you can see it rubs off. This is perfectly natural. And um, yeah. If I'm not entirely mistaken this should be good enough. All right. Done and done. Okay. And then I have to make sure I actually hit those small holes. There are those lots of small rubber holes to keep them perfectly aligned. I need to make sure that those are hit perfectly. Every single one of them. I usually do this uh, from one end to the other instead of starting in the middle because that makes it easier for me to pop the smallest holes into place later on. So I'm starting with the big ones and I'm working my way. It's a little bit fidgety work, but it should be working nicely. It should be popping just easily into their place now, and they do that. It works perfectly every time. All right. Here you go. I don't miss any of them. They should be really glued. Not glued for real. You shouldn't use glue on it. Don't ever use glue with this, because then you have ruined the keyboard. But they should feel like they're almost glued together. That's what I what I meant. And they should look perfect. Everything has to be perfectly stuck there. Yeah, they are perfectly in line. This works just like it should. All right. There's only one thing that remains to do now is to put it into place again. All 
Oh yeah, I should probably put this one in first. Like this. And then this one goes in like that. And the same routine here. This one goes first. And then this one goes in here like that. Just make sure that all the cloths cover these perfectly because you don't want them to mess up later on. The less mess, the less entanglement, the better, the longer it will last and work just fine for you. Right. Another thing you can do if you have a 3D printer like I do, if one of these are broken, and I've seen many of these are broken uh, on other keyboards, is that you can actually 3D print uh, another one of these keys. Here's the advantage. We put these in order so we know which one is short, short one and which one are the long ones. And as you know, um, the long ones, I might have messed up earlier here because you can see there's a difference. So I'm going to do this right. I'm going to use the long ones for these. I'm going to have to shape a little. Oops. Yeah, this doesn't go entirely as planned always. There you go. And the short one should be here. This is the short one. Yeah, this is the short one. Just make sure I get it right. And these are, I'm, I'm just going to go by the long ones and short ones here because it'll be better for the entire entire keyboard and I do it right from scratch. Let's see if I have any yeah, I have one here. I might have messed this up earlier when I cleaned this keyboard the first time. It shouldn't be a terrible difference, but you know, it's not good <laughs> to do this wrong. Right. Let's see if I have a long one here. Long one short one long one. Put it over here. There's a long one here. All right, and then the rest should be just short ones. So that's easy enough. Nope, oops. Sometimes you need to watch the orient orientation of these two because they can be a little bit worn. You want them to face downwards so they don't pop off. Yep, that does it. Feels good. Now, before we're done with this, there's another thing I need to do. And I'll show you that. I'm just going to edit this video and uh, stop here. Because we're done with this. As you may remember, we had some issues with the sliders. The volume sliders were a little, a little bit scratchy in the sound. So we're going to have to look into that because I did spray them with this and they didn't quite work out. So it could be due to some contact issues down here. I'm not really 100% sure about that, but I think it's worth looking into. So uh, I think that's what we should be doing. So I'm going to just look under here, see where they are and locate them. They should be somewhere under here, if I'm not entirely mistaken. I'm going to need glasses for this because... Uh, well, I'm not 20 years anymore, and I'm going to have to take a look, see if there's any contact issues right here. Because if there is not contact issues right here, I'm probably going to have to change. I'm probably going to have to change the sliders, but I don't have that particular slider sort. So it's not going to help me to take it out uh, at all. So what I will do is that I will uh, try to re-solder the contact points and to see if that actually helps it a little bit. I'm just going to inspect it here to see exactly where they are. And I think I know exactly where they are right now. They seem to be soldered into that area here and over here. So there are the two uh, contact points we have to concentrate upon. Okay, good. Let's do that. 
I'm going to freshen them up a little bit, get a little bit closer to my uh, soldering iron because it has one of these self-feeding mechanisms. And this is from the 80s, so uh, we don't use lead-free here when we're fixing this. We don't have to because this is from the 80s and they didn't use that back then. And then it's better to use the one with the lead in it because that's going to work better, I think. Just let it go through there properly. And there's probably a middle point here. That's probably just a shielding, but I'm going to do it anyway just for to make sure that everything is okay. Yep. Right. Shielding needs a little bit more heat. But if that doesn't take care of it, then uh, nothing basically will. Unless I change them, because then they might actually be simply worn out. And that is a possibility, of course. That is a 100% possibility. That the potentiometers, uh, potentiometer sliders here, are actually worn out. That is a totally plausible scenario. Okay, that takes care of that, hopefully. So, um, let's get it assembled. See if I remember everything correctly, I'm just going to get the keyboard. Alrighty. It's very important to remember where the shielding points are, so I don't mess up this, of course. I want to do this right. There's a shielding point here, I think. I need to take care of, make sure that it gets under here. Okie dokie. It's quite heavy, actually. Let's see if I'm getting it right. It's a little bit fidgety. There you go. I am such a careful guy. As they say, it's better to be safe than sorry. And since I'm not trying to hide this from you guys, it's kind of difficult to, where well, the camera is at the same time as doing this. Okay, it should almost be there now. I should almost get it there. There's the shielding for that one. And uh, this one should fit right there. And this one will have to go back here again. This is the aftertouch. Just to make sure that we get a good connection, I'm going to spray it a little bit. Just to make sure we get a good connection right there as well. All right. And now let's screw this thing into place. Where's the small screwdriver for this? I had one just around the corner. There you go. And let's take this one first. Yeah, we can maybe even take this one first. There you go. Gonna screw it entirely into place yet because I want it to be a little bit loose so I can adjust all these. That's a good thing to do every single time one does this because that makes it easier to make sure that all the points get into tightly and nicely without any problems. There you go. So 
that one as well. Stuck nicely into place there. And that should fit it nicely. All right, good. And there's that one as well. Oops. And this is why we do it loosely. And now I can probably screw it into place properly. Yes, perfect. Okay. If I have forgotten one, I can always retrofit that later on. I have a feeling there should be one here somewhere. And if I'm not entirely mistaken, there should be one here, but it doesn't look like all the ones I've been thinking of. Hmm. <coughs> Let's see if this one goes here, this one goes there. I could safely take one of these and put it here, I think. Because it looks like it needs one in order to be really solid, because I'm putting one here anyway. There you go, because now the whole entire keyboard is soft, super solid. I should be in place. And I'm going to fit this one, uh, just like it used to be. But first I got to... Um, Plug it in everywhere. This one right here, and this one right here, like this. And this one it should be sprayed, I think, just to make sure we don't get any future problems. Oh, this side. There you go. Wipe the excess there because that's really not necessary. There you go. Because I don't want it to be dissolved entirely by alcohol, you know? Because that could be a risk factor. Just gonna make sure it's balanced properly when it goes into this one. Yeah, that's nice. That seems nice. Good. And we have the three sockets here, and should probably fit. But I can fit it as we go. I just fit it under here. Like that. And this one. And the third one right here, I think. Just make sure I can hold it in place with just one of these and it will fit right away. I think I'm going to choose this one right there while I'm holding it down. Well, some of you are probably thinking I should be using an ESD kit for this. And yes, you're right. In normal circumstances, I would. But I just happen to know that these are not that sensitive towards it. And I've never had any issues with that. And I usually touch something uh, metal nearby here before I do this. And the reason I do that is that actually quite simple. Because when I do that, I'm just discharging myself electrostatically. So that should be just fine. I've done that with thousands of computers and I've never ever ever had any problems with it. So you don't really need to go overboard as long as you know what you do. You don't really need to go overboard with that. There you go. It wasn't really playing ball with me there, but it does now. All right. Goody. And then we have to be careful uh, and notice the um, shielding here because it has to fit exactly in those holes. And if I'm not entirely mistaken, this might be, have been a fault of mine earlier. Because, no. Yes. If this shielding wasn't in place properly before, this could have been my fault earlier. Because they're supposed to be like this. Not that it matters that much, but it's good to do it right, if you know what I mean. Might as well do it right instead of doing it wrong. So if I've done it wrong before, I might as well write it now, at least. Okay. 
Let's see if I have all the contacts in place here. Two ones here, yep. No one under there, nope. Be a little bit careful with the contact right here. Make sure everything fits perfectly. There's the hole for that one, there's a hole for that one, and a hole for this one, and a hole for that one. Yes, that should be good. Okay, let me see if I can find all of those I used here. Shouldn't be spread around like that. I don't know why I did that. That's kind of silly, but you know, what can you do? Sometimes you make mistakes. They're not serious mistakes, so no worries. If I should lack a screw or two, I have tons of them available in a little screw box that I have. But lots of surplus screws from other projects, such as things that I pull stuff from and toss away whenever I want to keep something. This is an old electronics guys kit uh, trick. We always do that. We don't toss everything away. It's valuable stuff. And uh, that's the one that goes in the middle, I believe. Yep. And it should be one here and one here. I am guessing. No, I don't have the guess. It's right here. Okay. That's it. It should take care of all of those. Let's plug it in. Should perhaps have sprayed these as well. Yeah, we'll do it. Take a little bit of the excess stuff around here. Away. All right. If I'm not entirely mistaken, that should be all of it. I'm probably going to have some leftover screws, but ah, what the heck? Who cares? Uh, okay, let's mount this thing together. I think I haven't forgotten anything here, at least. So uh, let's screw this thing together again. It's right there. Okie dokie. Maybe it's better off over here, considering the construction. I don't have all the screws, obviously, because there was a lot of screws missing. I remember that when I bought it. So I'm having to sort of guess where I can get the best support for it. Obviously, the keyboard itself is going to need the most support. The chassis itself nah, is going to get mostly support from um, the keyboard stand. Let's see if we have some more screws somewhere. Nope. I have used them all. The only thing I'm missing now is the end screws. And those are these. That, my friend, should be it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go downstairs and play with it.
so you guys can see how it works and if it works nicely. Oh, I crashed into the camera there. It is so heavy. Oh, goodness, it's heavy. Oh, yeah, it's really heavy. Just the camera again. Oh, yeah, one final thing this little screw thing here. To put that one in place. So, uh, that's done. Let's go uh, downstairs and play with it. There she is, all ready. So let's see if it works. The display comes on just fine. That means I haven't forgotten any buttons. But let's see if the media is working exactly like it should. So uh, let's test every single key. That's perfect. Every single key here. Every single key is perfect. All right, this is the one that I used to give the problem. And here, the touch is working perfectly. Let's see how it is with the after touch. I have a better one for after touch. The other one is 47. The sweeping, uh, spacious sweep is better for this. We fixed it, it works, and this is how you can clean an old keyboard and make it work again. I just hope you picked up some tips there, and that's all the, I wanted to show you. It's been a long, long while, so if you like this kind of videos, just please click like and subscribe and all that, you know what I mean, and alert, because it's not so often that I actually show this video, so if you want to watch this, just remember to click alert. Okay, see you next time.